When the unthinkable happens and each second counts, do you know what to do? In the sixth episode of The Local Okie, I am talking with Gary Aldridge, <coughs> owner of Firearms Training OKC. And he's going to talk to us about the skills and knowledge uh, that we need <coughs> to save the life of someone that is suffering uh, from a gunshot. Uh, but before we get into that, if we haven't had the chance to meet, my name is Jimmy Jenkins. I am the owner of J&J Medicare Solutions. Uh, we provide boomers and seniors with the information that they need to understand their options uh, within Medicare. And our goal is to be the most trusted Medicare agency uh, in the state of Oklahoma. And we believe in treating our clients as if they were uh, our parents. Also, I'm the host of The Local Okie, a Facebook Live show where I interview people like Gary Aldrich who are doing you know, great things uh, here in the state of Oklahoma. And <clears throat> it's unfortunate that the topic that we're about to discuss, you know, I hope, someone, I hope no one ever has to use the information that we're about to talk about, you know, but the sad truth is that a lot of us or several of us will at some point in our lifetimes have to deal with this. So, you know, what do you do? And so I'm really excited uh, to introduce you guys to Gary Aldridge. So Gary, thank you for being on the show. Hi. Well, Jimmy, thank you for having me. Absolutely. And so I came across Gary, I was scrolling on Facebook and uh, went to his business page and it piqued my interest. And so I gave him a call and we had a 30 minute chat. And as we were talking, his passion came out uh, for teaching people um, about gun safety and what to do when this or that happens. So uh, I know he's gonna provide some uh, great knowledge today. So. Uh, Gary, before we get started, can you just tell people a little bit about who you are, where you're from? Uh, my name is Gary Aldridge from Jones, Oklahoma. I've uh, been teaching guns now for about five years, been in, into guns for a long, long time. My dad was uh, on an Army shooting team. Yeah, so we've had guns. I've been around guns ever since I was little. Okay. And the main thing was that he always taught me was safety, safety, safety. Right. You can't be too safe. So in all our gun training classes that we do, we really emphasize on, on safety. Okay. You know, hopefully, w if we're safe, we won't have to talk about what we're going to have to talk about next. Right. Uh, but, you know, it, uh, so mm -hmm. we, we try and keep that. And then it, I got interested in what happens after, I, if, I, if I have to pull the trigger, what's right. going to happen? Right. Um, we're, we're involved in a gun shoot. What's, you know, it's, is it going to be, Police show up, they pat you on the back, and you go home, and that's the end of it. And after doing a lot of research into it, the answer is no. You know, you're going to have to deal with what's going to happen afterwards. Um, what really? And then I started looking into this saw this uh, gunshot first aid. Uh, it's a lot of times if you're involved in a gunshot, a gun, a gun fight, and you know it might be you that gets wounded. And if it is, you know, I want to be able to treat myself and keep myself alive. Right. It, or what if it's one of my loved ones? Sure. You know, that, that it's like a gunfight. They're in the room. They get they get hit and they get wounded. You know, I want to be able to try and keep them alive also. So, um, you know, started getting looking into it a lot more into what's the aspects of after the shooting and the, the gunshot portion uh, come up. Uh, I had a, a chance to uh, go down and be certified to teach the class through uh, Vital Defense Group down in Fort Worth. Uh, went down there and, and went through their training so I could teach the course. It's a two-part course. It's an online portion. And the online portion is, is taught by the owner of the company, okay. uh, Nick. And he goes through all the, all the there's like 10 different sets of uh, videos online you go through. You can watch them a number of times and, and get something out of them. Uh, and then we, I provide the online portion. Online portion, we're actually doing everything that's in the class. We're hands-on. When we hit the ground in the, in the classroom and we start teaching, it's hands-on on everything, and we start running. Uh, we go through all the different deals of putting on tourniquets, putting on pressure bandages, evaluating the person. Uh, we, we go through all the pieces, and then at the end of the course, what we do is we do scenario. Okay. <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll have somebody inside. They'll be, we'll have them some fake wounds. We'll set them up. We'll have somebody outside. They'll have the trauma kit ready to go. And we'll set it all up. We'll go out there and we'll say, okay, now this, this, the scene is safe. Right. <clears throat> and act like you have your gloves on. Right. Go to work. And, and that's, 
Oh, sorry. I mean, go ahead, go ahead. And, and that's what I found is, you know, I think the first thing when we are um, doing this this, first, this gunshot first aid is, you know, the first thing we need to do is make sure that the scene is safe. And yes. that's what I came across. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I guess there's a list of, you know, what are the top things that you do in order. Uh, obviously, number one is to, you know, make sure that the scene is safe. Uh, wh what comes after that? And you, and a lot, because a lot of times you don't want to be somebody that if, if the scene ain't safe and you're actually trying to give aid to somebody, you end up getting shot also. Right. So, that, and that's why we always deal with once it's safe. Uh, the next thing, the our course, we have a little saying: uh, stop the breathing, uh, stop the bleeding, uh, fix the breathing, head to toe, wrap and go. Okay. So that the first thing when we you first thing you come in there for is you start looking for massive blood loss. Okay. So, okay. I've got an arm in, injury. I've got a leg injury. Tourniquet. Okay. Uh, if you're hit in the artery on your leg, you're there's and it depends on the person, but you're you're likely to totally bleed out in a minute or a minute and a half if you don't get the blood stopped. Right. Okay. Arm is a little bit l uh, more time. Okay. But that's what you do first. Okay. Get the blood stopped. So you have to find out where the, I guess, bullet entered as well as exited, if it did exit. Yes. A lot of times it doesn't, but yes. so you got to find the... Yeah. So okay. the first thing you do is you go in there, you, evaluate, you look over the person real quick. He's got a leg injury. Let's treat it. Let's get that tourniquet on. Let's get the blood stopped there. Then you'll evaluate everything else, try and okay. find what you are. If if it's you don't find anything in the legs or the arms for the tourniquet, you go then you go to start on looking at the chest. Okay. Okay. And you check him: is he breathing okay? Right. He if he's not, he's probably got a chest injury somewhere. It could be like you said, it could be an entry and an exit, and you right. have to deal with both of them. Then we would start looking at putting on a chest bandage. Okay. Um, once you get that, then you can kind of go start. Then then you go to the head to toe. Basically, head to toe is we evaluate them. We start at the head. We start looking all over. We're looking for more gunshots. Okay. Going all the way down, all the way through. You may have. You may roll them over. Okay. The person is there. Um, you don't find anything else, but there's their vitals are starting to go down. Okay. They're, they're starting to have a hard time breathing. Well, if they're having a hard time breathing, they've probably got something else going on up up, up in their chest. Here. Okay. So maybe now you need to roll them over. You may roll them over. And it may have been underneath his arm. He could have been up like that when he got hit. Now he's down like this, and you can't see the wound. Gotcha. And it's bleeding internal, and you can't see it. Well, that could be the problem. Okay. So you, then you start looking real close, and you start head to toe everything. Okay. Once you start head, and once you get through the head to toe, then basically in the kits that, that we sell, there, there's a, 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 a blanket. Okay. To put over the person, keep them calm. Oxygen two sat monitor to get that. You should keep checking their breathing and keep checking them. And then you got to make the determination: Are you going to the hospital or are you going to have the ambulance come here? Okay. Uh, a lot of that, and that just depends really where you're at. Okay. You know, here uh, in 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 Dale City, we can probably have an ambulance here fairly quickly. Okay. But if you're out in the middle of uh, Watonga or way <laughs> out. You know, you probably don't have that, that right. luxury of having that at ambulance right there. Um, so, you, in your kit, you have special, <clears throat> like to keep. Uh, what do you call it? The deal to keep them warm. A blanket. Just a blanket. Yeah, okay. It, it's a it's a sol like a solar blanket. Solar blanket. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you don't have a solar blanket, just get the next closest thing, a jacket, a blanket. Yeah, you're just I mean, trying to keep their warmth up. Okay. Just trying to keep their temperature up because you know you're trying to just keep them. You're trying to keep them comfortable. Trying to keep them. Uh, just constant, you know, trying to make sure they don't they don't start losing their vitals, and but you're just trying to keep them. You know, we go into what's safe for us to do as civilians. Right. We don't want we don't go past and start doing what doctors do. Right. This right. is what a a civilian, and that's what there was. There's a lot of training out there, and I, it, the first time I've had training, and there's there's law enforcement training for quite a few places you can go. But there's not no training for civilians. Okay. That's the that's the main <clears throat> problem. Civilians don't have it, and right. we and we can't usually go to law enforcement training right. scenario uh, shops and all because we're not law enforcement. Military has training. We can't go to the military training. So, what can civilians do? And right. it's not out there a lot. Right. So, and I know for me, I, I've never even looked at any, anything like this, uh, <clears throat> and so. I would like to think that if something were to happen, I could use my common sense, but I really wouldn't have a frame of reference. So for me, this is giving me a frame of reference that, 
if something did happen, I have a checklist of, okay, I need to do this, yeah. this, this, and this. So I think this is well, uh, and, and, great. The, and the main thing on the course is hands-on. That's yep. the, I mean, you can sit and watch videos and watch videos of how to put on a tourniquet, how to put on this, but until you actually do it, right. it's doing it. Right. Putting it on, cranking that tourniquet down and feeling it cut off the blood supply to your arm. Right. You know, and I, it, until you feel that, and it, th that's when you know. Right. That, okay, now, yeah, I've got it tight enough. Right. It's should, my fingers are tingling. It's right. tight enough. And it, that, you know, and you go through those pieces, but then we add the scenario training at right. the end to put a little pressure on you. Sure. So, I mean, when you're going in there, you're having to evaluate it, you're having to do it, and it, it's it's pressure. Right. You know, and it, it'll get you thinking. I mean, you, you know, and the best thing you can do in that scenario is just calm, is go in there, calm yourself, don't, you know, just think about it. I've got to do what, I've got, I know what to do. And right. go through it, the motions, and do what you know how to do. Right. So, uh, you mentioned the tourniquet, tightening that thing down. Mm -hmm. Now, do you pack the holes, or is that just depending on blood flow? What, what, how, how do you determine what to do there? That would depend on where the, really kind of where it is. Okay. If you can get a tourniquet on it, and a tourniquet needs to be about two inches above the wound, not on a joint. Okay. So if you can get a tourniquet on, that tourniquet's gonna, sh it's gonna shut the blood supply off. Okay. If it's not, add another tourniquet. Okay. But if it's an area up in here on your shoulder, you might not be able to get a tourniquet in there. Okay. So that's where you do your pressure bandage. You, you actually pack the wound, okay. and then put a pressure around it to kind of get the blood stopped. Okay. So tourniquets should be good, but if there's situations where we, you there can't get that on there, there may be a scenario. Yeah, you, you may have a hard time getting a, getting that tourniquet on there. Okay. Uh, you know, in a, in a way up here, if it's if it's right up in here, it's hard to get a tourniquet two inches right. above that. Right. So in that regard, up in here, you'd want to do a pressure up in the top part of your your groin area up in there. Okay. You might want to do a pressure bandage up in there also. <coughs> and do you just want to lay them flat? Do you elevate them, or do you not move them very much at all? You kind of let them get comfortable. Okay. The main thing is to let them get comfortable. If they're having a hard time, if, if it's a gunshot victim and they're 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 shot and they're laying down here, when you come to them, they're going to try and get into a position where they are comfortable breathing. Okay. If they're shot in their chest, they're having a hard time breathing. Okay. So you kind of let them get in the situation. Um, you know, moving them. You know, people are like, well, if you move them, well, th you've got a gunshot victim. I mean, right. You're trying to. I mean, they're there. If you need to roll them up on their side, up on their on their side, so they can breathe. Pe you know, you hear people say, well, if you move them, you might hurt their back. Well, if they've <laughs> shot with and they've got a, a shot in their spine, the damage is done. Sure. So in that regard, rolling them up is probably not going to do a lot more damage. Right. But you are going to keep them alive. Sure. And that's our main. Objective is, is Main to objective uh, is, yeah, keep them keep them alive. Keep them alive until your ambulance can get here or your paramedics can can get here, and they can offer more more help. Okay, so with the class, how, how long is the class that you teach? The class is well, the uh, there's about ten videos online, okay. and that usually takes uh, an hour or two to watch the videos. Okay, and and really take your time watching them and understand what he's talking about. If you, if you need to back up and back up and re, you know you might want to watch one twice, but about two hours on the video, and we do it on we do it online. That gives you you can do it at your leisure time. Okay, that way it's not a pressure deal. You're not sitting in in a classroom watching two hours of nothing but videos. Right, you can watch it at your leisure. Watch two or three today, two or three tomorrow. The classroom portion uh, it usually is about three hours, about okay. three, three, anywhere from three to three to a half hours. And that's a, that's with everybody role playing and yeah. doing all yeah. that. Okay. Now we limit the class to ten people. Okay. There's only ten people here in, in a class at a time, and we do that so we can get through everybody. Because okay. when we, when I say you know if there we want everybody doing the tourniquets. Right. And in our kit, there's two types of tourniquets. There's two types of pressure bandages. Um, there's the chest bandages. And we have the students putting on er everything in the kit they use. Okay. And they they learn about everything in the kit, and then when the scenario comes in there, then it's up to them to choose. Right. What are they going to use? Right. And it may, and there's really not sometimes. I mean, whether they use a uh, a pressure bandage or an ol uh, the Olas bandage. Right. It's not. <laughs> it may, you know, it's up to them. Yeah. But both of them will get the job done. Okay. But it's what they feel comfortable using. And. When I was looking, I, I didn't see a lot of people teaching this sort of class. I saw tons of tons of conceal and carry classes, which are good too, but I didn't see anything. That's uh, why I got into this. Gotcha. Okay. That's why I got into this. 
I, I start, you know, there, there is. There's a lot of people teaching the intro courses, a lot of teach, people teaching the classroom to get your license. Uh, a lot of people are doing advanced. Everybody likes the advanced. Shooting while we're moving, engaging multiple targets, drawing your gun from a holster. That's fun stuff. Right. Don't get me wrong. It, it's great. Uh, but I like to teach my people in my concealed carry class about that kind of stuff. I mean, we don't get into a detail. We talk about being having to shoot in different positions and all. But I like to teach them that there are what's going to, you know, we do talk about what's going to happen after you shoot. Okay. You know, and that's, you know, there's legal ramifications after you shoot. Uh, and we, then, then there's this, the medical side of it, trying to keep people alive. Uh, there is stuff you need to think about before you shoot. Right. Now, is that going to determine whether you shoot or not? It shouldn't, but right. it just needs to have you prepared. At least you know. At least you know. What's going to happen. Obviously, our first uh, thing that we should be worried about is safety and protecting our family safety's and stuff it. like that. Yeah, yeah. safety is number one. But then safety is number one. By going through the class, you're not shocked at dealing with this lawsuit or right. you right. know what's going to happen. Okay. Right. So how many different uh, courses do you teach? Oh, like there's three or four different gun classes. And okay. There's this first aid uh, training for just the individual civilian type person for gun safety. Uh, I also do teach an active shooter training course. Okay. The active shooter course it talk it does go over active shooter preparation, how to hand how to, what to deal how to deal with an active shooter if you have one in your business or church or wherever. Uh, and then we talk about okay the active shooter has been terminated. Now we've got four or five different gunshot victims. How are we going to how are we going to deal with that? And in that class, we also it includes the gunshot first aid. Right. Okay. So we teach the how to how to te take care of the person. We teach all the medical stuff. The, in the active shooter portion, we go a step further. Okay. Because in active in in when you got active shooter, when you got seven or eight different victims, now you got to go into triage. Right. You got to determine okay, who needs treatment first, and who it, once we get them stable, who's going? When an a first ambulance shows up, who's going first? Okay. So you got to get into doing the triage on that. So we we add that kind of an umbrella over the gunshot first aid to uh, to teach in the active shooter okay. class. And, and you you teach individuals. Uh, you know, we were on our call the very first time. You also talked about you do some training for churches, and because you felt like that was one of the major weak links is. You know, that's well. That's kind of why the active shooter training. I, I kind of, I have it. It's kind of. I've kind of got it in two flavors. I got one flavor where I can talk about a you know, church dealing, okay. and then the other is kind of more, uh, kind of more for a business type check okay. deal. Because um, here at church, I'm on the security team, uh, and I put all all the security team. I put them through the gunshot first aid training because I want them to be trained to, if we have an incident here, I want them to be able to be able to put on tourniquets and, and try and save lives. Right. And I, and I know a lot of the, you know, bigger churches, they have uh, actual police officers and people on staff and they have nurses and stuff for first aid. But, you know, I know a lot of the smaller churches, they don't have the resources yeah. to be able to pay for that. And so, you know, it's more of a volunteer. But right. I don't know if... A, I think it's more prevalent now that churches are starting to get that training, but uh, I don't I know. I think it is, and, and the other thing is, it's uh, you know, there's just it's just not pre a lot of places out there that are teaching that are teaching that. Um, it, I know active shooter right now is becoming a very very hot topic. Right. Uh, I work at Tinker, and we have all kinds of training on it out there. Right. Uh, but it, you know, you just can't go. Every, you know, you, if you go down and talk to the gun, the uh, the gun ranges and stuff. You're not seeing active shooter training right. is one of their options that they teach. So that's why I kind of started looking into these other areas that are out there that we need training. Right. And going that route instead of going the, I'm going to do the, the advanced courses right. as much. That's good stuff. So <clears throat> when is it, I'm going to post on uh, the page, but uh, your next class is March? March 6th. March 8th. Eighth. Eighth. Eighth? Okay. Eighth? I can't tell it's so I think small, it's March but uh, March eighth. March eighth, okay. And is that class four right now? Or are you still no, still no, enrolled? I, got, I okay. got spots in it. Okay. Yep. So if you are interested in taking the gunshot first aid, here's all of uh, Gary's information, and uh, you can definitely contact him to get enrolled in that class, whether it's an individual for individual, business, uh, mm -hmm. or church. And then he offers different classes uh, throughout the year that you can uh, definitely contact him as well.
And uh, so there's a lot of different, inf there's a lot of information that Gary has. Um, we can't go over it all today because it'd be uh, overwhelming, but we are thinking about doing another, uh, another video or two. Um, today was gunshot, first aid. Uh, we're going to do an active shooter I think we, yeah, active uh, video, shooter. and you had some other ideas uh, that we could do. We, we can touch more on aftermath of a shooting. What, aftermath what of a shooting. What all happens, okay. yeah, what all happens after you've had to pull the trigger. Okay. And then also, if you have a topic that you would like uh, Gary to go over, you yeah. know, just put that in the comments. You know, whether you're watching this live or on the read broadcast, go ahead and uh, type that stuff in. Or if you have questions, he or I will be uh, happy to answer that. So, again, whether it's live or on the read broadcast, just go ahead and type that stuff in because we'll be checking it uh, periodically. So, as we wrap up, do you have any final thoughts uh, on, on today's video? No, I, uh, I, I do have the next first aid training March 8th. I okay. do have an active shooter class scheduled for the 17th of March and then uh, I there is I do have a concealed carry class scheduled for tomorrow okay and I post everything on firearms training OKC Facebook page and it, I do also post on arms list under services and Craigslist gotcha good so like Gary said it's one thing to hear the information but it's another thing to actually experience it and you know do the role playing just to get your uh, brain thinking about that. And like I said, it's sad that we even have to it is. train on this stuff. And like I said, hopefully no one ever has to use it. But, you know, the sad reality is that several of us might have to deal with this uh, throughout our lifetime. So, you know, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully it was beneficial. Um, again, if you would like more information uh, from Gary, I will include his contact information uh, in the contact or in the comments. If you have questions, go ahead and submit those and we'll be happy to answer them. So, uh, thank you for watching the sixth episode of The Local Okie, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.